Texas Jim Rednick, and I'm here to say we've got the greatest records in the AWA. But you're not here to listen to me mumble. Let's fill you in on the Wrestle Rock Rumble. Get on! Given the fact that pro wrestling relies heavily on eye-popping visuals, one might assume that at some point in time, at least one wrestling promotion has been able to produce a decent music video, right? That's right! But before we begin, I only got one question for you. Number 10, WrestleMania. Released in 1993, WrestleMania the album features songs like the most 1980s sounding 1990s ballad by Bret Hart called Never Been a Right Time to Say Goodbye and The Man in Black himself. No, not Johnny Cash, but a hip hop version of The Undertaker. Yeah, boy! However, the most famous track on this album is a remix of the actual WrestleMania theme and was, of course, the entrance music for that young up and coming. Linda McMahon. Now the video for this peppy bop should really begin with a warning for anyone that has sensitivity to rapid fire camera close ups that are extreme enough to make both Wayne and Garth blow chunks. But what really tips the scales of the cheese factor here is the infamous opening line, are you ready for the Survivor Series? What an odd opening considering the fact that the album and song are both called WrestleMania. Number nine, rap is crap. Among its other spectacularly strange decisions in 1999, WCW decided that former AWA prodigy Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig, who was practically Canadian, would become a cowboy from Texas, specifically West Texas for whatever reason. If you like rap, you're all a bunch of crap. <laughs> Hennig was the leader of the West Texas Rednecks, a heel stable that included Bobby Duncan Jr. and Barry and Kendall Wyndham. Their one hit wonder, Rap is Crap, was supposed to make the next public enemy number one. But before we get to that, WCW's heavily Southern fan base 1000% uh. agreed with the Rednecks' assessment of rap being crap. The music video itself is a bizarre cheese fest, showing the Rednecks performing on stage in a huge arena and also in front of like 16 people in what is most likely a Shoney's parking lot. Number 8, Rock America. When Chris Jericho teamed up with his old training buddy Lance Storm to form the fiery babyface tag team of the Thrill Seekers, they had only one goal in mind. To rock America. Now I know what you're thinking. How could two Canadian Canucks get over running amok in the old school Appalachian territory of Smoky Mountain Wrestling that was run by a certified spaz like Jim Cornette? Well, apparently all they had to do was spend a day acting like two jackasses and mugging for the camera in like something you'd see in a cheese laden early 90s sitcom opening. As the glam metal musings of Danger Danger's one hit wonder Rock America play. What follows is a solid five minutes of these Canadian friends forever feeding tater tots to bears and shopping at a local gift store. I mean, nothing says we're a pair of thrill-seeking party animals like playing skee-ball, am I right? Number seven, Real American. Speaking of rocking America, Hulk Hogan was such a recognizable pop culture icon in the mid-1980s that everywhere you looked, all you saw was red and yellow splattered all over the United States. Hogan had action figures galore, a Saturday morning cartoon, and even a Hulkamania workout set that unfortunately did not include batteries or anabolic steroids. The Hulkster was the de facto face of pro wrestling, so it wasn't really necessary, for example, to film a music video for his entrance theme, Real American. But let me tell you something, brother, brother, brothers, brother. Why not oversaturate the dude? In all its patriotic provolone glory, Hulk plays a star-spangled electric guitar in front of famous U.S. national landmarks like the Statue of Liberty, the Liberty Bell, and my personal favorite, Mount Rushmore. Number six, I'll be your hero. 
Besides Roman Reigns, no superstar has been pushed so hard and so fast as Lex Luger was after Hulk Hogan's WWF departure in 1993. Poised to pick up where the Hulkster left off, Vince McMahon simply decided that Luger would be his next huge babyface star and set about creating an alternate reality in which that was true. Vince shelled out who knows how much cash I don't know! for the now infamous Lex Express nationwide tour. Traveling the country in a custom red, white, and blue painted bus, shaking hands and kissing babies in between naps where the total package would lay on an American flag pillow while wearing an American flag shirt while hugging another American flag pillow. And the sappy song, I'll Be Your Hero, sung by some Michael Bolton wannabe, became the cheesy alternative anthem to Hogan's Real American, with the music video practically daring us to not somehow support Lex. Number 5. Body Work Hacksaw Butch Reed was a beast. The former football standout became a natural fit for the world of professional wrestling with his bold personality and bodybuilder physique. Reed was a strong powerhouse brawler with a solid run in Bill Watts' Mid-South Territory before making his way to the WWF, where it's completely true that he unfortunately no-showed the night he was written to become the first black intercontinental champion. And although he did have a successful tag team run as half of Doom, with Ron Simmons in WCW in the early 90s, he never quite reached the peak of his potential. But at least we'll always have this corny training music video to look back on, featuring a bunch of white boys popping and locking as Butch banged out reps on the bench press, while some skinny dude who looked like Lamar from Revenge of the Nerds decided that a gym floor was the perfect place to practice his breakdancing moves. Number 4. Hosky. It was love at first sight. Your hair looks so good. Matt Cardona is currently on the greatest run of his career, no longer bound to a contract and a company that seemingly punished him for his creativity. Cardona is always ready and willing to do the work to achieve success. However, back during his WWE days and going by the name of Zack Ryder, the Long Island IC dreamt of being a pop star broski, which actually came true by becoming the first WWE superstar to crack the iTunes Pop 100 with his smash hit. It's Hosky, with such deep and thought-provoking lyrics like I thought we'd be so mates like Bubba and Lime. And roses are red and violets are blue. You may have left me, but I still woo woo. Woo! Number three, girls in cars. Somewhat remembered for his smooth 1980 yacht rock hit, Steal Away, singer-guitarist journeyman Robbie Dupree wasn't exactly the type of music act you peg for the world of sports entertainment in the late 1980s. But as a favor to his buddy and the real, real American Rick Derringer, Bruh. Dupree performed the wussiest wrestling tune ever. Now somehow, a cheese dick song about one man's love-hate relationship, well, with girls and cars became the awkward sounding theme music for the white meat rah rah baby face tag team of Tito Santana and Rick Martel. The song's video features plenty of women in vehicles of all shapes and sizes, as well as some rather odd footage of Dupree rocking out on a beach and getting swarmed by a bunch of seagulls. How this adult contemporary composition wound up accompanying the strike force to the ring is beyond me. Honestly, I think it's a catchy tune and it's perfect for soft rock radio, but I mean, nobody was hailing from parts unknown with this shit. Number two. You dropped the bomb on me. Any attempt by a wrestling promotion to create a traditional music video has typically resulted in mediocre mounds of mozzarella. For years, wrestling had been an athletic soap opera for dudes, but in the early 1980s, the promoters in the wrestling hotbed of Memphis, Tennessee, decided that after decades of exclusively hiring pot-bellied pigs, they'd switch it up a little and appeal more to the female demographic. And thus, the fabulous ones were born, sporting 
feathered mullets, deep tans that would make Matt Cardona proud, and thick manes of flowing chest hair, Skinner, Steve Kern, and Sweet Stan Lane treated viewers to clips of them oozing gallons of machismo, sipping sherry in a bubble bath, and playing dress up in and around a rural cabin which was probably located just due south of Brokeback Mountain. Number 1. The Wrestle Rock Rumble As legend would have it, the Wrestle Rock Rumble was one of the very worst attempts at trying to promote a big time wrestling show. Old school AWA promoter Vern Gagne had long resisted the winds of change that were transforming wrestling right in front of his Coke bottle glasses. And by 1986, well it was as undeniable as Cody Rhodes that the WWF brand of sports entertainment was the way. And so Vern channeled his inner soul patrol and co-wrote an AWA-themed Super Bowl Shuffle parody rap. The Wrestle Rock Rumble featured the biggest stars of mid-80s Minneapolis, reciting fat rhymes layered with so much cheddar, you'd have thought that Packers Nation had infiltrated the Twin Cities. 